Yeah, that was that was wonderful. I could especially hear Skye's voice. She indeed has a beautiful voice. Uh, singing from uh, Stony Brook uh, United Methodist Church over in Gahanna. In fact, uh, they're getting a new pastor come July. And uh, they've been very gracious to help us in our Zoom ministry. And I hope uh, mom and dad, Johnson, say something to Sky and have her share with the other couple people how much we do appreciate. I, I sit and listen to a him like that, and I do think of uh, grace and peace be to you from the Lord Jesus Christ and from God, who is our creator in this beautiful spring season, from the Spirit, we often call it the Holy Spirit, who is our nourisher, meaning part of our lives today. Let me have a very brief prayer. God of all beginnings of spring, oh, we look around and we see the beautiful grass and the trees, the plants. We thank you for those in our congregation who uh, share the stewardship of farming. We appreciate what they do to bring so many wonderful things to us. We thank you for your purposes that strengthen our wills and give us direction when often we need light. We thank you that we know that there is justice and mercy and peace and harmony if folks will just open their lives to you, Christ. It's in your divine name that we do pray. Amen. I'm going to go to a scripture lesson. I looked it up. We used it in a little different way the first year I was there, but uh, it's, a, it's, it's really a good writing from Paul. Um, it's Paul's second letter, and it's in that fourth chapter, and I'm going to read from verse 7 on some verses. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels to show that the transient powers belong to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. And again, that's from 2 uh, Corinthians. Authorship, of course, is the Apostle Paul. And let's see, I read 7 through 12. We talked about that. I think about the first month or two I was there, but I want to do something a little different with it today. Um, I try not to do this in a, in a sermon, but I'm really involved in politics. I love politics, where a lot of people say I'm sick of hearing this or that. I, I, I love politics. Um, some of my first impression of politics were Back as they just began to show on TV the different conven conventions, Republicans and Democrats. And I, I, I was always excited about it. I, I would ask my family if I could stay up late. Um, it probably the first president that I really remember, if I'm honest, is um, a Harry Truman. Uh, I enjoyed his frankness. Um, and his directness. Several years ago, I, I read a book uh, about uh, the late President Truman, um, about his life after he retired, back in Independence, of course. There's where the Truman Library, talking about a lot of different things with some elementary school children. And I thought it was interesting, one of the questions that was raised um, 
the author says the boy was about seven years old and he asked the president, the late president, Mr. President, and I'm going to use his English, was you popular when you was a boy? The president looked directly and answered, why no, I was never popular. The popular boys were the ones who were good at games and had big, tight fist. I was never like that. And without my glasses, I was blind as a bat. And to tell you the truth, I was a kind of sissy. If there was any danger of getting into a fight, I took off. I guess that's why I'm here today. And the little boy started to clap and everybody else in the room clapped at the president's honesty and evaluation of himself. And so did I, as I read this story again this morning, a reminder, um, I hope to each of us, of the experience of how we often have failure in our lives. That's why Paul was writing the Corinthians, who are having some difficult times. He said, we are afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. Yeah, we're perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Knocked down, but not knocked out. Because such moments come to all of us, we acknowledge the bad times that failure brings, and we look often for good news. Here's some observations I have about failure. First of all, I'd start out by saying that failure is something that we can avoid. Um, let me brag on myself here a bit. I never in my life choked up singing a solo. I never lost a match in golf. I've never had a poem rejected by a literary magazine. I've never, ever been defeated in a race for public office in as much as I am the one who loves music and politics. That's probably an amazing record. But you see, I've never sung a solo in my whole life, nor would I try. And believe it or not, as much as I like sports, I've never played golf. I've never submitted a poem in any magazine. I tried a little of it in English in college and no better. And I've never run for public office. I have never failed at any of these things because quite frankly, I've never tried. Only those people who try something run the risk of failure. The main choice most of us make is sometimes we stay away from failure as much as we can, and that's fairly obvious. I got a, um, a magazine from my university or from Miami. Uh, it was part of a speech. The title of the speech grabbed my attention. It's probably the reason I read it. It was a long article. On failing, on failing at a high level. Each of us chooses the level of his or her failure. In baseball, there are some major league errors. Some make only minor league errors. Some make no errors at all because they don't play the game. In life itself, the same options are open to all of us. Paul confessed that many times in life he was afflicted, perplexed, persecuted, and knocked down. But many in Paul's day suffered none of these discouragements, safely living little lives, we might say, never offering themselves an opportunity to grow. What small battles most of us limit ourselves to sometimes tells a whole lot about us. Some folks 
never change anything they do in life. We get into certain kind of habits and I'm very guilty of that. I have for my own security, sometimes really have to challenge myself to do something different. Now, if you can look here, my wife <clears throat> broke the border of things a little bit. We men once in a while, you know, should if we are married or if we have a friend, share some flowers. If you'll notice to my right back here, some beautiful red roses. My sweetheart, my wife gave those to me. She's a little better on getting out of the main road and doing something different. If we take a ride, I'm willing to go down the safe ones where I know just what goes and what traffic is. Emily will often say to me, why don't we go over and cut over on that road and go over there? I do it sometimes to make peace because I'm not a big risk taker. What a tremendous thing we have going at Peach Blow right now, folks. I'm not going to preach to you about it, but we do. We are so blessed with the people that we have on Zoom ministry. We had 15 people show up yesterday. I told Emily, if we have eight or nine, I'll be excited. And a couple of folks that were working or were not feeling very good called me. And when it got all down to it, I got at least 22 people between the 15 that were there. We have so much going for us. One of the things that you're going to have to help Joel with, and I'm going to try to help you with, is that we are willing to take on some new challenges at our church. Yes, we're a small church, but I got to tell you, we're a mighty church. I'm going to bring up the, the work day again. I've had work days at churches that have been 1,500 to 2,000, and I'm lucky to have a half a dozen people come. We have a lot going for us. We need to be honest about some of the challenges that we need to do. And my commercial again, like I gave last week, some of you I'm going to pursue or you pursue me. We need to involve you in more than just being on the Zoom ministry. We need you in leadership things. Second thing, we need to understand that failure can be a teacher, and it can be a teacher for us here at Peach Blow. Consider this, the only way you ever really learned to walk was by failure. If your first step had waited until you were completely sure that you wouldn't fall, well, you may have still been wearing some high-topped white shoes that had unscarred soles. The only way we'll ever learn to do and to reach out in some of our ministry is we're going to have to take some chances, and we're going to have to do that. Failure leads to success. I really do believe that. These moments of failure, which Paul lists so candidly, he went on to say to us how he succeeded in sharing in the Lord's work. Failure does teach us. If in our work something is going badly, something we need to learn is offering itself to us, we need to try that. A lot of things in marriage are trial and error. Let's face it, folks. It isn't any different when you're a preacher. You have good days in marriage and you have bad days. Every marriage should expect moments of failure. The strong marriages that I've known through the years with couples are those that are willing to learn from their failures. Learning in marriage to treat all disasters and incidents is an opportunity to grow toward each other and to grow together. Failure is a teacher, and it becomes an asset for us from individual learning to our marriages to how we treat our children, our grown children, to what we do in our churches. And finally this, failure is never final. 
I have to remind myself of that. I had a course in college that I had great difficulty in. Uh, I was never a scholar, but I was a good student. I was never brainy, but I made good grades. But with all that in mind, I can tell you, I took a course called cost accounting. Now you may say, well, that couldn't be as tough as maybe taking physics, which I took, or some math. Cost accounting was a bear for me. I mean, it was a real live bear. I got a C in the course, and I think the accounting professor must have been very gracious and very kind to give me a C. But you know, today, while I quietly don't get involved in a lot of things in churches and finance, I thank that professor and some of my accounting professors for helping me to understand that failure is never final and you can grow in it. And that's the attractiveness of Paul's word, I think, to us. Afflicted he was, but not crushed. Perplexed, yes, but not driven to despair. He was knocked down sometimes in his ministry. He had ups and downs. He had victories and defeats, successes and failures. And he grew in his ministry, continued to grow. So I'm going to challenge Joel this morning as I wrap this up, and I'm going to challenge you. I believe the timing for Peach Blow is here. It's time for us to spread our wings a little. We're not going to do it very much till we get back in the building. But I think Cheryl and Keith have assured me that between Zoom ministry and being in the building, we can have a lot going on for us. Now to sum all this up, I want to tell you about a little boy. Um, the little boy was a Gastineau Brothers. Now, that doesn't mean a thing to you, but it was a five and ten story in the little community I grew up. They had the largest room where you could find any kind of card you wanted. Any kind of card. I used to go in there and <coughs> just look around. Marge, who was the owner of it, would often say to me or to someone else, can I help you? One day I was in there and I remember one of my friends was in there. He was a, a small boy about, about my age. He was in this greeting card section. Marge says to him, and I, I don't recall exactly, long time ago, <coughs> are you looking for a birthday card? He shook his head, no. Are you looking for a goodwill? No, not nobody's sick. An anniversary card for mom or dad? No, he said not that. And he says, shaking his head, he said, do you have anything in line of a blank report card that I could give to mom and dad? He wanted to fill in his own report card. Um, that young man uh, was a good friend of mine. Roger was a good friend. Uh, he, he retired a number of years ago as a pediatrician, pediatrician in Dayton, Ohio, in the Children's Hospital. Obviously, he um, learned a lot of things. God does this for us. Even though we often have failure in life and get a little discouraged, God will give to us the basis of beginning again, starting again, fulfilling our lives. Thanks be to God, the great teacher, the great physician, the great communicator. Let me close in prayer and a benediction. Today, we all need to stay together in the Lord's Prayer. I'll, I'll do the praying this today. Let me pray. Lord, out of the darkness of the last evening, we have a new day and we have light. And out of the darkness of our personal failures, you have given us light from your Son. Keep our hopes alive, whatever our age. Give us and remind us of the grace that comes from God. We celebrate especially the wonderful opportunity of the newness of life. And now, Lord, we commit to you, our loving Savior. We thank you for what the gospel gives to us and strengthens us. But most of all, we thank you for the strength 
to be loved and to love others in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.